Uh, in any case, good afternoon, and thank you for having me here. I'm very excited to be here. Uh, I appreciate Dr. Waldman having to be at the conference, and I appreciate all of you coming here and not hitting the, the tables or the pool or any of the other fun things that are, that are there. Um, yes, I did start my career as an internal medicine physician at Georgetown, and I learned everything about medicine while I was there, thyroid disease, uh, managed the intensive care unit, but I didn't know anything about skin until I did my uh, dermatology training. So in the next, what are now, 11 minutes, I will talk with you about uh, what I do as a board-certified dermatologist at Las Vegas Dermatology to provide my patients with a healthier, more beautiful life. Uh, options for the treatment of acne are many, and it's hard to pick just 10 tips. So uh, what I would like to emphasize throughout the talk is that if you only remember three things from the talk, that the most important things are to wash, to medicate, and to moisturize. If you do those three things, uh, you'll be far ahead of everybody else, and I think those are the key points. So I will not be using brand names for many of the companies uh, that I speak for, and I'm not being compensated for mentioning some of the products that I do talk about because we do offer different products in the office that I think are helpful for acne, and you, you'll see those. I think acne, uh, just to be the most basic about it, is a disorder of the sebaceous glands, and they can be infected, purulent, plugging of the sebaceous glands. You have multiple different types of comedones. It's every teenager's rite of passage. It's every college student's exam night surprise. It's every sports uh, player's acne when they don't wash themselves off, and it's a hormonal nightmare. Uh, there are a ton of different acne washes that are out there. Uh, we have some that we sell in the office. But I think, again, if you do nothing else but just wash, even with bar soap, you're way ahead of the game. The benzoyl peroxide washes are like the keratin layer, and they cannot be used in someone who is allergic to aspirin, and they also can't be used in pregnant women. And in fact, both salicylic acids and benzoyl peroxide can't be used during pregnancy, nor can topical retinoids like uh, tretinoin. Hippocline's wash is a great therapy for people who have uh, really infected appearing skin, and bleach baths are very good. Uh, half a cup of bleach and a full tub of bath water for somebody who just has acne fulminans, which would be acne uh, everywhere. They can sit in that bath for five minutes and then wash it off. The Clarisonic brush is something that I use on a daily basis. I put a foaming wash on, let it sit for five minutes, and then use the brush. It takes a minute, and it hits four different areas. Uh, but I think that it's a great therapy. Once you have a clean canvas on which to place your medication or your moisturizer, uh, it will be more effective. So my, my tip number two is to medicate. And there are multiple different options in terms of medications. And each one of these uh, ha has a benefit, but you don't use all of them in one patient. Typically, I will have uh, my acne patients leave with no less than three prescriptions when they come out of the office. They'll have a wash, they'll have something for the morning and something for the evening time. Uh, topical retinoids are typically put on at bedtime. Uh, in the morning time, I typically have people use a benzoyl peroxide product because those, again, can stain sheets and towels. It's not a big deal if they put them on at night in Vegas uh, with people working all kinds of crazy hours. I have to remind people it's their nighttime. Uh, and then oral antibiotics we will get into, and hormonal therapies uh, may be necessary, and we'll talk about that. Uh, moisturization. Moisturization is key. So once you've washed the face, you've removed that lipid layer, you have somewhat of a damaged now uh, skin barrier, and so a moisturizer is good to repair that barrier. I like Aveeno, Cetaphil, CeraVe, and the Skin Medical products. Really any uh, lotion or moisturizer should be good. Just know that lotions are thinner and creams are thicker. Uh, a patient who has really dry skin may benefit from a thicker uh, topical such as a cream, whereas somebody who has uh, really oily skin may need a toner to degrease and then a thinner topical uh, lotion. Uh, this is my favorite tip of the whole talk. My brother always teases me about being a dermatologist and says I'm a pimple popper. Uh, yes, if it's ready to go, pop it. These are, this is a patient who has Fabry Raku show, which is uh, solar elastosis with open uh, comedones. But in anybody who has acne, I'm, I'm, uh, it never ceases to amaze me when they say, well, I was told that I shouldn't pop it because it'll scar. Yes, it will scar if it's not ready to go. But if it is ready to go, if it's a pustule, if it's an open or comedone, then it can be popped, and I think it's beneficial to do so. 
in the same way that uh, spreading weed killer on, on weeds will kill the weeds, sometimes you just actually have to go in and pluck the weeds. This is somebody who has microcomedones, and this would be my fifth tip. Anybody who has microcomedones, which are these small little bumps, they aren't uh, open comedones like you saw on the previous slide, and they, they're, they're not very deep, can be treated with a topical retinoid. Uh, that's, that's the standard of care for uh, one, of, one of these lesions. Adjunctive therapies, I think, are very helpful when it comes to treating acne. I'm a big fan of combination therapies, like I said uh, previously, with people getting three different types of products. In addition to that, these adjunctive therapies can help to uh, treat, treat the skin and exfoliate and remove unwanted papules and pustules. Uh, this is somebody who has uh, a little bit of a combination acne. They have some of the microcomedones, like you saw on the previous slide, which were those tiny bumps that didn't have any openings to the surface. Plus, they do have openings to the surface. So this person is a perfect candidate for a microdermabrasion. And uh, this is me getting a microdermabrasion in my clinic. And there's a diamond tip on, on the microdermabrasion that we use that removes the, the dead layers of skin. And then it's attached to a suction device, which sucks out all of the sebum. Chemical peels, I'm looking forward to Dr. Kaufman's talk on chemical peels. I had a chemical peel last night because I wanted to glow for this talk. There are many different types of peels that you can get. Uh, there are ones that just, I had the Illuminized Peel by Skinmedica, which is just a refreshing uh, peel. But they can be used to, to treat multiple types of acne, and I'll just leave it at that because of the next lecture. This is somebody who has a closed comedone and a couple other papules. This would be perfect for some extractions. So a facial with extractions, uh, typically people who have acne are a little bit stressed. Certainly during stressful times, it's been shown that acne papules do explode. Uh, they've done studies in uh, college students, and they found that during exam times, besides the increase in the amount of pizza that's eaten, there are also increases in uh, acne form papules. So a relaxing massage plus an extraction, an 11 blade, and then squeezing out the, uh, the comedone is quite useful and will improve appearance. Be aware that uh, once the acne has cleared, you're going to have some residual. There will be a little bit of hyperpigmentation that will take some time to resolve. Uh, deep cyst papules and nodules. Uh, these are treated with oral antibiotics. Uh, topicals may be a little bit helpful in this case, but really uh, the topicals go from the surface down and the orals will treat deep into the sebaceous glands. And again, I had a patient in my office just this morning who was upset that their acne wasn't any better. Well, the acne was a lot better. I take photos of everything. So I had these before and after side-by-side -side images. The patient said, well, I'm really just upset that I'm red and I have these little divots. I said, "Those the redness will fade and the divots can be treated with cosmetics. So uh, to that point, you can see slowly over time, and probably five to six months would be a good uh, amount of time over which to make sure that uh, there has been enough time on medication and uh, you know, there is improved improvement in the skin. Uh, tip number eight, I think, uh, as we get hurried in practice, is something that, uh, as dermatologists, we're, we're taught, you know, just look at what you see, don't be biased by the history, but my internal medicine background wants me to be biased by the history. In this case, I had a patient who had new onset back acne and back knee is one of my favorite words in the English language. So when we talked about her back knee, what changed, what happened, three weeks prior to her developing this, this acne on her back, she had a Mirena IUD inserted. Uh, Mirena is a levonorgestrel eluding uh, intrauterine device, it's a contraceptive, but that, uh, that levonorgestrel can cause acne. So it was a hormonal cause. Other hormonal causes, I've been seeing a lot of uh, bodybuilders who use testosterone and uh, other women who have polycystic ovary disease and, and things of that nature. So it's somebody who has a hormonal problem. Uh, yes, in this person, I advise removing the IUD, but also uh, oral antibiotics. In women who have uh, menstrual acne and also um, people who are doing some bodybuilding, uh, being on an oral contraceptive pill may be helpful just to normalize the steroid binding globulin and decrease the amount of testosterone. Spironolactone is another option for a hormonal problem and polycystic ovary disease of metformin. The Blue U is a real nice therapy for people who don't want to take a pill. 
uh, we, we have this in our office and for people who don't want to use uh, topical therapies. They sit in the light for 16 minutes and 40 seconds. It's 417 nanometers of light, that's the wavelength, and it kills P. acnes, which is uh, the bacteria that's thought to cause acne. So this is a good alternative for somebody who just wants to do something a little bit more natural. And finally, uh, nodulocystic or refractory acne uh, can be treated with isotretinoin. Uh, this really is the um, nuclear bomb of treating acne. There, it's brought with all kinds of issues. Uh, there's a, a system called the iPlex system, so if you decide that you want to write for this hypervitamin A medication, then uh, you have to enroll in the iPlex system. We dispense out of our office and we have a pharmacy there, so we enroll people in the office and we actually uh, go through the iPod system in the office as well, so we can get them their drugs then and there. We found a lot of difficulty with isotretinoin and getting the drug to the patient because they have to document, uh, if it's a woman, two forms of birth control and negative pregnancy tests. Uh, they also have to go online and answer questions and it can be quite a nightmare. It's a five month course of drug. Uh, there's blood that's taken every month to make sure that the triglyceride levels aren't elevated and uh, that is uh, isotretinoin. So in closing, the uh, more serious your acne is, the more aggressive the therapies are going to be. Uh, hopefully you will remember to advise your patients of the three most important things to do, to wash, to meditate, and to moisturize. Las Vegas Dermatology, for a healthier and more beautiful life.